Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. The pre-penultimate nibble of Percy Jackson. Oh, wow. More peas. Yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We are almost to the end of the first season. Second season hasn't been re- renewed yet, but, you know, I think it was uh, released that the first episode has been streamed like 26 million times or something like that. We're on our way. Like, just announce it. You know, Disney would have to be a real big bunch of fools to not green light a second season of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. That was a lot more tame than I thought you were going to go. <laughs> this is PG. Yeah. <laughs> well, we this have an E. A, this is a... <laughs> Family podcast. No, it's not. <laughs> Listen to our episode on Ghosted. It's not. <laughs> well, let's not get into Ghosted. Uh, okay, so we're on our way to Vegas in this episode. Before we get to all of the Lotus Loconus, mm, I try to alliterate. Couldn't do it. Almost. Almost did that it. That's pretty good. Um, make sure you're following this podcast. Make sure you're, you know, subscribed. You get alerts when the episodes drop. We have a Patreon. We have special episodes on there. We have some fun things coming up. You might want to go on there and check it out. It's 2024, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank you guys. I Every time we've been asking for reviews because we're on our way to get 200. So that way we can be, I don't know, 200 verified or whatever it is. Um, you guys have been doing it. So we're slowly getting there. Keep doing it. We're seeing them. We can't wait to post some of the new ones we got. Uh, just go down there. Leave some reviews or just stars if you're on Spotify. Nope. Yeah. All right. That stuff. Thanks, folks. <laughs> Y'all are the best. And we want to be kind as well and offer you a spoiler alert. Ugh. Because between this episode and the one before it, things are changing from the book. So, yeah. you know, if you don't want to be spoiled about what happened, please go watch it first and then come back. I do feel like these last couple of episodes have really started changing things. Yeah. I like them. But we're in uncharted waters here. Well, that's what's exciting. Oh, waters. That's what's exciting, though, is that you know, when you read the book, you're like, well, I know it's going to happen, but now we don't necessarily know it's going to happen or no how it's going to happen. Idea. So we're just, we're just uh, blindfolded like everyone else. It's fun though. It's fun. Cause then it's like, oh, I can see how this connects, but I don't know. They've thrown us in the deep end. <gasps> oh, more great. water puns. Okay. We'll work on it. <laughs> we still have a whole episode ahead of us. So let us officially take a bite of Percy Jackson and the Olympians episode six. We take a zebra to Vegas. Directed by Jet Wilkinson and written by Jonathan E. Steinberg and Joe Trax. Who has six thumbs and is headed to Sin City? Our favorite trio. The Lotus Hotel and Casino awaits. There, Grover meets a fellow satyr and Percy and Annabeth have a crap side chat with Hermes. The son of Poseidon fails his driving test and plunges into the depths for a bit of bad news. Wow. Thumbs, baby. When you said six thumbs, I was like... Oh, I have two. There's three of them. Got it. Yeah. Math. There's three. There's so there's Grover. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so um, we're in, you know, Kindness International. We're in the storage container, right? When the episode opens, I was very confused. Very, very confused. So Percy is continuing to have visions, dreams, eavesdropping on dreams, whatever you want to call it. It's all over the place. But he's back at like Yancey headmaster right office and he's hearing this conversation of who i'm going to assume is the headmaster of yancey to the lightning thief the person that stole the master bowl and he's kind of reprimanding him just a little bit i gave you the tools to do it and what happened it, it, it didn't work if you don't you know do better somebody's going to take your place like percy and he looks right at him ah! Ah! Ooh. so I was hoping for another Rick Reardon appearance in the principal's office here, but we did not get one. What if Rick <laughs> just is Kronos from here on out? Right? <laughs> That'd be great. And Yeah, that would be really great. But unfortunately, no, I did not see him here unless he was in that corner and they just didn't show it. But the interesting thing about these dreams is that it's really, it's a, it's a mash together of what's actually happening of this voice talking to someone. but. It's in a way that Percy can perceive it. So it is the headmaster. Right. So, right. So it's kind of like this mishmash of 
this voice talking to him, but he doesn't really know who it is. So his mind is just making up a figure. Yeah. And I mean, it's interesting, right? It's like the mist is a thing that as the series gets on, there's more that kind of happens with the mist or we get to know more. So I'm curious if the mist is at play here, because if Percy is eavesdropping on a dream or something or a conversation, why does it look like something he knows? Right. So it would be maybe the mist is like obscuring it. Maybe they're like Mm. having a conversation and they're like, put the mist over us, like the mist of silence. And that's what he sees. It's very interesting. I'm curious to see how they handled it in the show going forward. But I, that is interesting. Right. Yeah. It's, it's in my mind, it's just that his mind cannot actually perceive who it is. So it's just creating characters out of people he knows. Well, since it's Kronos, he's a bunch of little tiny pieces in the bottom of Tartarus. So spoiler alert. <laughs> well, <I've, laughs> hundreds and thousands of years. <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> well, no, because at this point they think it's, they think it's Hades. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I've already said it's Chrono, so <laughs> whoopsies. Uber spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I said it a while ago. Whatever. <laughs> you guys probably listened to us talk about the book, so it's Chrono. But it is funny <laughs> watching them talk about it and they're like, Hades, Hades. And it's like, you guys, you don't even know. You're so silly. <laughs> In this conversation, though, there was um, something else that was dropped. It's the war beyond Zeus and Poseidon. Mm-hmm. Um, so. There's something bigger at play than what Zeus is trying to do. Yes, this is not the end game. No, and I really like how it's like, you know, we have to do this for Zeus. Zeus is like scary. He's very powerful. And it's like somebody's already like doing something that's like has nothing to do with Zeus. We haven't even seen Zeus or Poseidon or any of these characters. So it's really interesting of like we're supposed to fear or revere these characters. But like we haven't seen them yet. So like. Yeah. Percy's just like, okay. (laughs) And imagine being, I mean, us as the audience is one thing, but Percy has no idea who these people are. Mm -hmm. And yet he's on this quest to try and save them from starting a war. Yeah. And uh, he tells them it's not time for us to meet just yet. Dun, dun, dun. When? Scary. On to Iris messaging, which Mm -hmm. was something that we were very excited to see. You know, when we did our interviews and we talked to the visual effects people, um, and they had talked about how they kind of got the iris messaging from like putting an iPhone flashlight through a water bottle. That's exactly what that looks like. Yeah. I'm really curious what it looks on the other side of somebody getting it. Like, is it just that, but just floating in the middle of the room, you know? Yeah. Or, do, <laughs> or is it just like, you know, since it's Chiron's office, like everybody's office has a human cell phone and a prism. Probably. To get your iris messages. I know later in the books, uh, Percy in his cabin, um, there's like that fountain that's in there and that kind of acts as like an iris messaging mm-hmm. pool almost. And I'm I'm wondering if Chiron just has one in his office, just like a little fountain. That's- oh, yeah, that would be lovely. <laughs> I, and I would also just like there to be a voice that says like incoming iris message. Oh, that would be cool. iris message. What is the iris messaging ringtone? What is that? Uh, oh, gosh. I, I want it to be my old Nokia. Um, ringtone no it's very analog (laughs) so one thing that i was actually really glad that we didn't see any animals except for when they were free so i know we talked about them last episode of like please don't like we we know we don't need to see them i'm glad we did not see any of them i agree very cool um so what do you think about the conversation with luke annabeth and percy through iris messaging So even in the books, I never liked that Luke was in Chiron's office. Right? It's weird. It always bothered me. Like, There's no reason for a camper to be in what happened. I just thought of something, but I'm not going to say anything. (laughs) Sorry. I like had like an epiphany (laughs) right now. (laughs) What a mysterious podcast (laughs) where we just think things, but we don't say them. If I say something, it's going to spoil stuff. And I'm like, oh, It makes sense, but whatever, go on. All right, but that always bothered me. (laughs) And I'm surprised that it didn't bother them. Mm. Like, why are you, it did look like- Why are you in his office? Yeah, they were kind of like, where's Chiron? Yeah. And he was like, oh, he's like out there making sure the camp like stays together because there's a war looming. So everybody's picking sides, which I think is really interesting, right? And it's like, also, yeah, Luke, why are you in his office? Of course he's gone, but then you're in his office. Hmm, Fishy. Uh, I know your dad is the god of thieves, but like, 
Don't Maybe do that. don't. And also <laughs> don't answer the iris message. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying though. Do you have a choice? Mm. Does it just appear? Because she said, show me Chiron in his office or something like that. It was very specific. So I wonder if it just appears in the office and whoever's there is like, hi. <laughs> well, if that is what's going on, um, then Luke is one smooth character because he did not even flinch. He's like, oh, hi. So it's like, guys, there you are. What's going on? You got any updates for me? I've been waiting. Uh, but the conversation itself um, does kind of lead us to knowing that things aren't going so well at the camp um, and that we also see this moment of, you know, ever since everything happened in the thrill tunnel of love. Just call it tunnel of love. But that's not what it's really called. It totally is. No, the neon Leah, sign. Leah Sava Jeffries, in an Instagram thing that they posted, she literally said, we just got done filming the tunnel of love scene. That's all we need to know. It's the tunnel of love. Okay, fine. It does make it easier for me. <laughs> yeah. So after the tunnel of love scene, they are now more open to being friends with each other, which is wonderful. They now have a bond and Luke notices mm. this bond between I them. I loved this part. So after he, they kind of talk about, you know, everything that's going on and they're talking about the monster of the day, like Saturday and Sunday, this is Medusa was this day. And then the chimera, um, and he's like, wow, you guys are like arguing like a married couple. Ugh. Made him so awkward. Like totally dear, tiny kids. But I, I do <laughs> appreciate Percy acknowledging the comment and saying not to change the subject, but I'm going to change it anyway, <laughs> but to absolutely change the subject. Yes. Cause dear God, you know, is I hope that there is some sort of God of therapy because I think in modern times after these demigods go on quests and if they do survive, they do need to talk to a mental health practitioner because if on Sunday they're almost they are beheading Medusa and then, you know, whatever. The next day, they're almost drowning. And there was no monsters on Sunday, by the way. They head off. Yeah. It was the Lord's Day. <laughs> <laughs> day of rest. Day of rest. <laughs> yes. Um, no, they just go back to Mr. D and uh, he gives him a bead for that year. <laughs> He's like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and they just cry. A single tear comes down their eye. They're like, thanks, Mr. D. And it's branded with whatever that quest, like the thing, the theme of that year. So it's like, great. Now I forever have to have this on. <laughs> Remember how you almost died with this? Medusa's head. Medusa's head. <laughs> it's fun for you. Here you go, friend. No. <laughs> so they also talk about, though, how. They think it's Clarice that stole mm. the Master Bowl. Again, like we said at the top of the episode, they're changing a lot of things. It could be. I'm just saying. That's true. It could be. Yeah. Somebody else could have stole the bolt. Who knows? The whole conversation of Kronos or the headmaster of Yancey gave the lightning thief the tools to steal the bolt and it didn't work. So who knows? Maybe who you think it is isn't actually. And maybe there are two of them. Oh, God, I can't handle it's two. It's actually Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thieves. As <laughs> the Thieves. The Thieves <laughs> of Lightning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one of my favorite parts of this episode, Grover. Grover is one of my favorite parts of this whole episode. And again, he comes in with some of the best lines. He talks about how the animals were telling him that the people doing this truck are idiots. And they have a plan to escape, but they're just missing thumbs. <laughs> of course they are. Yeah. Of course they're missing thumbs. Also him he, popping out of the top of the trailer. Oh, that was my favorite. He's just so cute. He's just one with the wind. Yeah, I love him. He's just he's just a little navigator and he puts his head out and he knows exactly where they are. Yeah. <laughs> I just love I just love his natural abilities. I oh, think yeah. that he is just pleasant and love and nature. I think if this were the 70s or the 60s, he'd be like, peace, love, and satyrs, man. Yeah, he's one with the natural yeah, world. 100%. Yeah, 100%. With Pan. Yeah. Oh, Pan. So what is so lovely about this is that they do indeed free these, oh. you know, illegally being, illegally trafficked animals. Yes. Um, And so, you know, Grover's just so pleased that they did this. <laughs> I love that <laughs> Percy is like, isn't this like dangerous? And he's like, no, I gave him a satyrs blessing. It'll be fine. He's like, no, I mean the people. And Kerber's like, mm, it's fine. I'm like, <laughs> listen, who cares? <laughs> it's people that put them in this position, so they'll have to pay for a little True. bit. True. It was mayhem. I, I also love how it's just like in the middle of an intersection. 
and there's just all these animals everywhere. It's like, yeah. yep, this is how we do things. We don't do it quietly. It's just an explosion of stuff happening. And you know what? It does feel so like real because you're dealing with what two 12 year olds and a 24 year old satyr mm-hmm. so it's like there is no finesse there is no quietly doing things it's no. like we need to do the thing and if it means that animals are everywhere then so be it we yeah. freed them yeah. on to the next thing <laughs> percy asking how do we know what the lotus hotel is and it was saying the thing with the giant lotus and i love the line of she didn't know that she saw it and he was like Oh, yeah, you were just two seconds ahead of me. Can we just like agree like the easy ones? Just give it to me. Like, just, <laughs> It's so good. I'm liking their relationship, especially after t- the tunnel of love, because they seem more able to play with each other yeah. a little bit because she's also laughing at him and teasing him, mm-hmm. which we didn't get that until now. We're yeah. like six episodes in and now they're friends. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing when you can jab at your friends. Yeah. We also back in the truck got our second seaweed brain. Oh, when she told him to chuck the drachma into the Irish brain message. and wise girl gets said quite a few times mm-hmm. in this episode and it's very lovely. I like their nicknames People, for each other. Can you tell me about my best friend? <laughs> so the Lotus Hotel. The Lotus Hotel. I'm going to put a disclaimer out there. I tried, I tried with all my might to find a Nico or Bianca, D'Angelo, anything. There's too much. There's too much happening. There were some kids I could not tell. I know Becky Raritan said that there's something with Nico in it. And if you found it, and if you know, please tell us. Becky, give us a hint. Tell. Give us a clue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> the Please, last, Becky. The last episode, we said hi to Becky, and she posted a picture with her in front of the Empire State Building saying hi. Becky, if you are listening to this, <laughs> <laughs> sorry we're putting you to work. Can you tell us? Like, <laughs> yes, just show us. <laughs> yeah, just, just show us. I tried so much. I tried to look for a sad, gay Italian little boy, and I could not find it. And he was sitting right in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> right next to me on the couch. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, I tried. Uh, you did. You, you really did. And we did. I'm telling you, on, on our second watch, I know for myself, I wasn't even paying attention to our main players. All I was doing was looking at the background. Um, so we really did try. I do want everyone to just pause the episode right now. Play uh, Dua Lipa's Levitating to mm-hmm. really get into the feel of the Lotus Hotel and Casino because that did me right oh the needle drop was fantastic i, I said know, do the peep yeah i know that in the um movie that shall not be named everybody online was talking about like poker face poker what is going to be the song i'm glad it wasn't that because that's too on the nose right mm. and who doesn't love Dua Lipa? great fantastic and it played just when they got into the casino that's it that's all we needed needle drop done i was so excited yeah i, loved, I loved it we both went, oh <laughs> i was like uh, uh, yeah let's <laughs> dance baby so <laughs> So the the casino itself, before we get into like what actually happens in the casino, how did you feel about the look of it? Like, what did you, what are you feeling? Give me what you're feeling. I think on the outside, it looks really impressive, right? There seems to be some sort of roller coaster. It's huge. So, you know, tons of people can be there. It definitely gives you that Vegas casino feel. Mm. And even when you walk into it, I've only been to Vegas once and it's just like this all consuming thing. That once you go into a casino in Vegas, it's like, that's it. That's where you live. It's yeah. like the smells, the sights, the people. It's just a totally, you know, all-encompassing experience. So I think that they captured it. Yeah. they. I mean, casinos, I've been to quite a few, especially being in Colorado. They have a lot of casinos in Colorado. Um, that's how it feels, right? It's like once you go in, you're just... So I like the aspect of like them adding the lotus eaters to a casino it's just very smart it's Mm -hmm. like there's no clocks in a casino they always give you drinks they try to keep you there and they do and in this it's like no they'll keep you there forever yeah (laughs) forever ever so that's just like an added step to their quest here and shout out for all of you know librarian friends because there's this conversation when they're talking about um the uh, Odysseus and the Odyssey and the Lotus and eating the Lotus flower and Grover or Annabeth says to Percy, have you read the Odyssey? And he said, well, the graphic novel and Annabeth gives him a look and he says, it still counts. And I'm like, that's right. Percy. Yeah. graphic novel counts. You know what else counts? Audiobooks count as reading. Reading is reading. Reading is reading, baby. Don't let anybody tell you any different. If, if somebody is literally 
telling you the book, reading it to you, that's reading. So you are reading. You can read Percy Jackson, you can read the graphic novel of Percy Jackson, or you can listen to the audiobook. Mm-hmm. And Noah is switching off between the audiobooks and reading. Okay. Right now. All right. Let's just before <laughs> I know, I know we're at the casino where everybody wants to know and talk about. But this is what I do. And I want to know your reading habits, right? I'm very fascinated with the way people read. I in bed, I have my iPad and I read the the ebook or physical book, whichever one I have. But when I'm driving or if I'm at work, when I can't physically like actually look at the page, I listen to it. And I always, <laughs> when I get back at night to read, I have to like find where I was in the audiobook and like keep switching between the two. It's mayhem, but like I get book through books very quickly. I think it's a very impressive feat. I love it. The only, the only time I don't do that is if I'm not really vibing with the audiobook. Mm-hmm, mm, the narrator. And it's just like, mm, I can't, I can't, can't. Yeah. But with Percy Jackson, luckily they're fine. Yeah. So I'm just like, this is, this is okay. I do, I do want to say though, the Percy Jackson narrator, like if there's a, like an onomatopoeia or something, something that describes something that's happening, he like does it. And it's mm-hmm. kind of funny because I have to remember these are for kids. Right. So I'm like, oh, fine. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're, you know, you're, you're very uh, sophisticated listening capabilities. Instead, as an adult. Of, instead of it's like, you know, blah, blah, blah. He yelled. It's like he does it or like he roars it. That's oh, fantastic. But anyway, let me know your reading habits because I, does anybody else do what I do? Let me know, because I know Derek, he'll listen to a book, but he's reading another book. Yes. So I'm always reading two books at the same time. I'm always listening to one and I'm always reading one. Although sometimes if I do have access to the physical copy of the book that I'm listening to, I do like to look through it um, to see if there's any sketches or to see what the chapter headers look like. Uh, So I will follow along in that way, but I don't do what you do. Well, I'll like partly read and partly listen to the same book. I mean, how else do you get through a book? The only time that will happen is similarly if I start to listen to a book, but I don't like the narrator, then I'll just fully read the rest of it Uh, because I want to know what happens. Right. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, there's very rarely where I'll turn off an audio book, but there's sometimes I feel like especially during the pandemic where they had like, I guess people couldn't come into the studios and stuff like that. So mm. they had the people reading it at home. So the audio quality was kind of like, not yeah, great. Um, so that's the only time where I'm like noticing some newer books. I'm like, mm, I don't like this. <laughs> but anyway, um, let us know your reading habits and how you read books. Yeah. Cause it's fun. I'd love to. And also plug for Libby. Oh, the Libby app from your local library, go to your local library, ask them about Libby or however they do digital books, your life and wallet will Never be the same. That's the tea. That is <laughs> Libby the tea. sponsor us. No, I'm just kidding. They're no, they're nonprofit and all that stuff for uh, libraries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Lotus Casino, right? So in this casino, I was really curious on the change from the book of them not getting a hotel room and all this stuff and having to go in there to find Hermes specifically, mm-hmm. um, which I liked because we get to see another god. Uh, they split up. <laughs> I know. And I, he specifically was like, I thought we were going to do this anymore. And it's like, we have to do this. We're running out of time. It's like, guys, just don't split up. I'm glad they did. Cause we got some cool scenes separately, but mm. it's never a good idea to split up. It's it, in any piece of media. It is never a good idea to split up. No, no. So Annabeth and Percy, before they get to Hermes, they have a conversation that's interesting And it's about Luke's mom. Mm. Annabeth talks about Luke's mom a little bit. And then we find out a little bit more with Hermes. But she cut off the Iris message with Luke before Percy could mention Hermes because he doesn't like Hermes. And it's not like he just doesn't like him because he was never in his life. It's because he went into his life and then something terrible happened to his mother Mm -hmm. that Luke doesn't like Hermes. So like justifiable hatred, Mm -hmm. I would say. and also. Good friend for Annabeth being like, we don't need to, we Bring don't need that to up. mention, right. yeah. we don't need to mention that. Um, and then he also brings up his visions and stuff that he's having. And I like some of these scenes in this with Annabeth where she doesn't know everything. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, what do, you, what do you think about this? And she's like, I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out. And he's like, well, what chance do I have? <laughs> None. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> but she's just like, I can't know everything. This is 
kind of brand new. We're experiencing some of these things together. Right. But I think that's hard for him to fathom because so far on this journey, she has known everything. Right. She's always had the answers. So what does it mean when neither of us have the answers? It feels a little scarier. They're just kids. Yeah. (laughs) But I do like that he pointed out, he's like, we have information that gods don't. So that's some big information. So like they have a card that now they can play with the mm. gods, depending on whatever is going to happen, especially with Zeus and Poseidon, because they seem like they're going to want to go to war already. It might be something to make them band together. Yeah. Again, I just think that a nice sit down conversation could settle a lot of this, but that's just me. It could. That's just it me. Really could. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get to Hermes, I want to talk about Grover. Mm. Okay. This I don't really know what to make of it. I mean, I get it, but like it was like way out of left field. I was like, whoa, okay. Who is Augustus? Yeah. So he runs into Augustus, who he knows. He's fellow satyr. Good friends with his family. He did stuff for his uncle, all this stuff. And he was a searcher for Pan. He went to go search for Pan, but he's at the Lotus Casino. Didn't make it too far. (laughs) Did not make it too far. Um, and it's Grover goes through some things with this, right? He he talks to Augustus about, you know, I found Ferdinand. He only got to New Jersey. Like, that's not really that far. Mm. But Augustus eating, literally eating, they said, don't eat anything. You can't eat any of the lotus flowers um, is all out of it. Mm-hmm. Like Grover is literally like opening up to him. And he's just like, I don't. Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, are we best friends? No, I don't remember you, actually. <laughs> Poor Grover. <laughs> yeah, this this whole scene is really interesting. And, you know, I think for us with Grover throughout the series so far, he's kind of been the more level-headed out of the trio, right? He's kind of been the great equalizer between the two of them. Like, come on, guys, get along. But when he's off on his own in a magical casino, I think that he sort of it shows that as a satyr, his where his true passion and drive lies, and it is to find Pan. And it's really upsetting when he he sees, found his uncle, right, and turned to stone by Medusa, and then he found Augustus, who went off to find Pan. So he found two people that aren't doing a good job, and mm-hmm. it's like no wonder all these licenses to search for Pan are being given out. And it doesn't pan out because, <laughs> because of all this stuff. But it's like, I'm wondering if for him, it's more like, what chance do I have if like these people that I looked up to and assumed were doing great things are like, not. <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of feel like maybe the searcher licenses don't matter because they're all horrible at it. Uh, I mean, sorry. But I also think maybe that's part of it for Grover. But for me, what I was thinking in this moment is that he's willing to get lost in this fantasy world because it could offer him what he's always wanted. Mm -hmm. And it is to be a searcher and to find Pan. And that's why he's able to forget so quickly. Well, he's also alone. Exactly. So it's like it's a double whammy. Yeah. As Annabeth was like, when you're alone, it's easier to forget what's important. (laughs) And it happens Quite quickly, he remembers not to eat anything, which I was very proud of him for. He does. And when Augustus is like, they're nacho chips, what are you talking about? The That scene, I loved that scene because it came out of nowhere and it got really intense. And I was like, even though I knew that the lotus flower was being pumped through into the air, when Grover realizes that and then he forgets midway through realizing it and the music is getting intense, I was just like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. I liked that. That was good. Yeah. Ugh, but then he's like, you want to, ha- I, I almost found Pan. Do you want to come with me and help me? Ugh, Grover. So, okay. I, he's not, I'm going to say the, the God of the natural world and the wild is probably not in a VR video game. No. I'm just going to put that out there. So my question though is about Augustus mm-hmm. and why, like, it almost feels like Augustus tricks Grover. It is interesting. That's, a, I got that feeling. But I don't think he knows enough to try to trick him. But then how come later on when Annabeth and Percy see him, he tries to run away from them? It feels like he was put up to something. Yeah, that is that is really interesting. To separate them. Maybe we'll find out later that there's other people in the works that were trying to like 
keep in there. Again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. That is true. I, I got that vibe, but it also was confusing because it's like he doesn't remember anything. Mm. Like he forgot Grover midway through their conversation. Mm. That was very interesting. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll ever see him again, but something was up with that guy. I, I think what I think that scene was to do was to show him like this is kind of the perils that you're going to go mm. through if you continue on this like wanting to search for pan get yeah. over it bro <laughs> <laughs> it's also i love these scenes without percy right it's because the the book was all percy's pov and it's like we're getting grover scenes with him particularly which i like because in the book sometimes whenever it's like he got to like a thing or something happened with him it was kind of just happening right instead of like building up to that you mm-hmm, know what i mean mm-hmm. um i like that yeah quite a absolutely bit. I mean, we have the this great cast. Let's use them. Mm-hmm. Let's explore their characters a little more, for sure. Speaking of great cast and characters, Hermes, Lynn, Manuel, Miranda. I love that when they first see him, he's playing craps, and he asks them, "Do you know how to play?" They're kids. <laughs> I love <laughs> <No>! <laughs> that they sometimes are so all business. He's like, "Jenna, pick up." So, like, are you? Are you kidding me right yeah, now? It's yeah. like, give me a break. I also love that Hermes on his, I guess, days off, puts on his beige sweatsuit and just hangs out at the Lotus yeah. Hotel. <laughs> what else are you going to do? I mean, he does exist outside of space and time, which I guess is good for him because he can just go and leave in the casino and it doesn't matter how much time has passed by. Who owns the casino? Who made it? I don't know. I Maybe. feel like in the books it might have said, does Hermes own it? Well, that's what, I, that's what I got the feeling. But then I guess who in the Odyssey are the Lotus? But they're just, I don't know. Don't ask me that question. <laughs> it's more rhetorical. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. <laughs> if you know, if you know the legend, please comment below. <laughs> Again, these are things we can look up ourselves, but we're making it interact. <laughs> we're in the moment. We're in the moment. We're playing. We're having fun. We're saying yes and baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 so the conversation between annabeth and percy and hermes is really interesting and lynn does a great job of showing a bunch of different emotions and having layers to this mm. character right the first time we see hermes is he's delivering the head to medusa and he's singing right and he we hear the line of like hey guys look at this mm. and in this scene when annabeth mentions luke it kind of snaps him out of him being like quippy, fun, whatever, um, to like listen to them. And he takes them somewhere private, which I love that scene of showing like his abilities. What an ability to have. Mm-hmm. Just snap of a finger. And he can take other people with him. Ah, he's so a cool. god. He's a god. Yeah. <laughs> he's a god. That's what we have to keep remembering. It's not a child demigod. It's a god no. with these full blown powers. You know, it's so, something I've been thinking about as far as the Percy Jackson universe is concerned is that like. When you think of like gods, right? It's almost like that Thor or Loki effect where they're like in capes and have lightning shooting from them and can split into a million versions of themselves. But these these godly forms are so based in human forms, but then those things with their magic powers happen and you're like, oh yes. Right. They are gods. They're westernized. It's it's an, it's like it's a very cool thing. It, it's it's seeing the human body in front of you, but then being reminded that they yeah. have the powers. I love it. I still do wish we would have gotten those fire and Aries at size, but that's it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I am excited to see Hades, though. I'm, re- I'm really, because he's going to be in his own domain, right? He's not going to be in the mortal world or anything, blending in or having mist around him or anything. So, like, I'm going to be very interested to see, like, how he is in, like, his place where he can fully be himself. This. So the actor that they got to play Hades reminds me very much of like I, when I picture him as Hades, it gives me very much dream from Neil, mm. you know, Neil Gaiman's right. universe. Yeah. That kind of thin and I don't know. There's something about it. Morpheus. Yeah. Morpheus. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm picturing in my head. I could be totally wrong. He could just be wearing like pajamas. Although I will say Lucifer in Sandman. Oh, amazing. Just saying. <laughs> Plugging for that series, but dear God. <laughs> That's, is that coming back or did it? Yes, it's it, coming it back. It did get a second season, it's gonna right? It's going to be taking forever, but mm. whatever. I'm here waiting. I'm not complaining. Patient, patience. <laughs> so <laughs> Hermes, they go to Hermes and ask him for help, right? Because they're running out of time 
to get to Santa Monica, to get to the underworld, to get the master vault and to give it back because they have to do it before the summer solstice. And he can easily transport them. That's how he, outside of space and time. Mm. That's why he delivers the mail. Mm. Um, he won't help them. <laughs> no. He just says, no, he's like, there is a secret way into the underworld. Do you know what happens every time I've let somebody or help somebody to do that? Do you know what happens every time? I think we can assume it does not end well. Mm-hmm. Because if he's saying he's not going to help them, which is nice for them, they're like, look, every time I do this, they all die or it doesn't work out. Or go cuckoo bananas. Right. I'm not going to do this to you, which is fair. But in between that stuff, we get this, you know, kind of um, omission from Hermes himself talking about like what it means to be a parent and what it means to be a godly parent. And it's like, he talks about how Poseidon was the one that told him to stay away from Luke. He didn't. And look what happened. Mm -hmm. Sometimes seeing you struggle and being powerless to do anything is parenting. I really like that line. It's like, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. I don't know. I, I want to be a parent, but I don't want to be a parent. Yeah. It's it's scary. Seems complicated. Yeah. So kudos to all you parents out there. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Powers are none. (laughs) Yeah. Um, We also get this interesting moment where, and and it's interesting, this this whole conversation about being a parent and, and, and Luke, it seems to bring up a defensive side of Hermes. And so he takes it upon himself to sort of remind Percy of what it's like to be with someone that you love, but you can't help. And you almost almost keep hurting them. Yeah. He says something like to be so close, knowing neither of you have any choice, but to keep hurting each other. And we see this, uh, a scene with Percy in the car. And it looks like either the hazards are on. I couldn't really tell, or the blinker was on, but we don't see who's in the car with him. Mm. He's just in the car by himself. And, and it's baby, Percy. baby. I was going to say it was baby Percy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it obviously made me think of Sally. Right. And it almost seemed like to me, the scene that was set was, here he was again being expelled from another school and she had to be put through all that for him. And there's nothing that he could do about it. Right. And they, but they, they have to like keep being with each other, even though she's lying to him in that instance. And yeah. It's hurting him and he's just being himself and it's hurting her. And now even in the future, it's hurt her even more because she's being held captive by Hades. He's dead. I'm just kidding. It's not dead. Maybe she is in this yeah. version. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> uh, but when he reached for Annabeth to remind her, she's like, I remember perfectly well. Do not touch me. <laughs> I really love that. I feel like Annabeth has learned from Percy that you can stand up to a god. Yeah. Because I feel like she's gotten like a little more in their faces. And I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wise girl got it. Mm-hmm. And she'll put you in your place. Heck yeah. Oh, I love it. So he doesn't help. Annabeth goes away. And I love that once you know that she put the invisibility cap on to steal his keys, you can see as she's getting up Mm -hmm. to leave, taking the cap out of her pocket. So good. And it was really funny because I I noticed that the first time we were watching it um, before I knew actually what was going on. And I was like, oh, what an interesting choice that she took that out. I was like, I wonder why Leah did that. Mm. Um, and it was very purposeful, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> very purposeful. But we find out that time goes quite a bit faster. The scene with Percy meeting up with Annabeth at the door, seeing that it's not daytime anymore, it's night. Obviously, time has passed, mm-hmm. even though they've been there for 20 minutes. Time has passed quite literally It's fast. a bad place. Yeah. Um, and I love when she shows him the keys. She's like, you pickpocketed and she's like, I'm multi-talented. Get it. Own it. <laughs> Hello. Yes, you are. It's me. <laughs> yes, you are. Did you forget? But uh, this the concepts of um, time going faster than it seems. I love those things in stories because it, it gives a urgency mm-hmm. to it. And it gives kind of, I don't want to say horror, but like helplessness almost. Like you can't stop it. You, it's already happened, right? Yeah. You can't go back. To where it was, you literally just lost all that time. And not to get too meta about it, but it's very much like an allegory for, I don't know. Casinos? Yeah, but also like technology and phones and like how 
you could like sit down with your phone and just be on your phone and not even realize that like an hour has passed. Oh, yeah. There's some weekends where I get really upset because it's just like, eh, I don't want to do anything. I'm just like on my phone and it's like 9 a.m. And I look up. It's like, oh, it's lunchtime. Yeah. OK, half the day is gone. <laughs> you know, it does happen. Yeah. It's like it's like you are you're hypnotized. You right. This is the Lotus. And you're just like, Ugh. yeah scrolling yeah. and it's like although you're going through different things you're just so stationary mm -hmm. it's very mm -hmm. bizarre they say i believe percy says because when annabeth left they have a conversation hermes and percy he finds out some more information and he tells annabeth about it um that it's like now thursday i believe he said mm -hmm. and the solstice is like friday like it's coming up really close but they don't have grover they have to go get Grover. They remember who Grover is because they see Augustus coming down the escalator. They're like, Grover, right? Horns, <laughs> goat legs. Yeah. That's familiar. So they go find Grover. He's on the VR looking for Pan, whatever he's doing. And I, again, love his delivery. I love Arian's delivery of everything. And he's like, we're your best friends. He's like, really? Uh -huh. You are? And he's like, a quest? Is it dangerous? It's not a deal breaker. I just want to know. It's so He's, good. He is so all in, yeah. even though he has no idea who these people are. Oh, so good. Um, it would not be complete, the show, with kids without having them drive, putting them in very adult, easy situations and just seeing the mayhem, right? Parking garages are twisty, turny nightmares. Yeah, so I don't I feel bad. I can't imagine my first driving experience being in one of them. No, it's allowed. There's things everywhere you don't know where to go no as an adult yeah. i still don't know which is up for more parking and which is down for exits like there's sometimes sometimes it's the opposite way and sometimes it's like i'm the only one going down like on a spirally thing yeah. and i'm like somebody's gonna hit me sometimes it says <laughs> exit this way but it's a wall it's like yeah. what is happening <laughs> how does this work <laughs> so they get into the cab which is amazing because Hermes ride is a cab. He's the God of travelers. So of course it would be a, a taxi. He, he has a monopoly on taxis, maybe casinos. I don't know if that's him. <laughs> Gold and, watches. Yeah, and uh, delivery service makes perfect sense. <laughs> He's doing quite well. <laughs> when, he, when he finally gets the car straight and he's going up the ramp and his friends are like, Oh my God, you're doing it. And he looks at Annabeth because it looks like Annabeth is so proud of him. Yeah. And he gets distracted because wise girl is like, you're doing great seaweed brain and just side swipes the whole thing up. Amazing. So funny. There goes your rear view mirror. I couldn't stop your laughing. Side view. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was, it was really fantastic. Oh. And then the jump scare of them almost getting creamed by a truck. And then being on the beach oh, immediately. Magical Hermes. Thank God they hit the road. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now Grover finally remembers him. He, they get out of the car and Grover's like, you guys are my best friends. It's like, Grover. By the way, I really you know. <laughs> love them being best friends now. Yeah. It's so cute. They are best friends. They're besties. Yeah. And this is only the first story. When There's you've been more. through, yeah. When you've been through like three or four or five, you know, almost life ending experiences together, you can't help but be best friends. Mm -hmm. I, um, there is a scene. Oh, I forgot to mention the scene. Um, Percy, again, being kind of selfless and like making sure his friends come first. When he goes to Annabeth at the beginning of the casino and he says it's Thursday, then they waste time going to find Grover to get him then to leave. It's past the time. Mm. And when Grover is like, oh, is this because of me? And he says he doesn't say yes. He just says, you're my best friend. We're all going on this quest. We're going to do this. It's OK. He like sidesteps the question again, even though he knows, yeah, it's like because we spent that extra time looking for you, we're late. And then when he goes into the water to go meet his dad for the first time, he's much more late than he thought. The summer solstice already happened that evening. Oh, the sea spirit. Y'all, they are switching things up on us. It's bananas. <laughs> She came out of that seaweed. She was like, hey, babe, he left. Yeah. Bye. He waited as long as he could, but like, you're late. You're oh. so late. <laughs> and, you know, thinking back to it, right? Aries sent them there to 
to find Hermes. He sent them directly to the hotel that he probably knew would suck the time up. Yeah. Yeah, but also Hermes kind of knew too. He wasted all that time with them. He exists out of time and space. Like he couldn't help them at all. And all he does with Percy is just tap his watch. He's like, you know, it wouldn't matter anyway. What do you mean by that? Well, tap my watch. Again, these <laughs> gods are just the worst. <laughs> They're jerks. They're the worst. <laughs> They're so Thanks awful. Thanks for nothing. They're so awful. <sighs> but I do really like the sea spirit comforting him in a way. Mm. And she tells him, you have to go back to camp. Like it's done. You're released from your quest. And Percy being Percy. And this is a complete change from the book because they make it at yeah. the last second in the book to deliver whatever they need to deliver. And this, they're already past the time. So I like the change of Percy deciding to continue. It's, it's a nice change because I feel like it just kind of grows his character and it shows his maturity a little bit. And mm-hmm. also his like unyieldingness. You know, he's like, I don't care. Like I'm going to f- see this through. Um, and she points that out. Yeah. She's like, you're, you're a lot like your dad. He said, cool story, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. But then another massive change from the book is he gets four pearls instead of three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What belongs to the sea will always find its way back. Interesting. It's the pearls. And I love the last line. She says, save the world, then go save your mother. So the pearls are going to help them. If you've known about the pearls in the underworld and everything, it's going to help them get out of the underworld mm-hmm. when they go in. Mm-hmm. In the book, they only had three. Three pearls. So we have a bonus pearl here. We have a bonus pearl, probably for his mother. I'm going to save um, critique, judgment, whatever stuff that I'm feeling until we get to that. I don't want to like prejudge it, right? Because like I liked in the book that like there was a decision that had to be made. Yes. There was four people, three pearls. And this one, they gave them four pearls. So I'm going to wait to see what happens Mm -hmm. to like fully judge that. It's interesting. I trust them. Because I've liked all the changes so far. It's all happening for a reason. But we'll see. Yes. One thing that I have been wanting to talk about for six episodes that I have, I keep forgetting to talk about. Wow. Massive. Yes. And this is probably going to be so trivial and not mean anything, but I have noticed it every single episode. Like this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Is Percy's necklace. So Percy has been wearing a necklace Mm -hmm. the entire time. Isn't it Annabeth's? No. He had it it before he met her. Yeah. He had it before going to Camp Half-Blood. It's a simple like rope or maybe dried seaweed or something. And I really remembered to write it down this time because as he's talking to the sea spirit, it's floating around his neck. And I feel like, why would Percy be wearing this necklace Mm. every single episode? I'm wondering, is it a gift from Poseidon from when Maybe. he was a baby? They didn't mention it at all? No, it's mm. never been mentioned. Maybe it was a gift and it's like... But like, know. I feel like we're going to learn about it. Maybe when he meets his dad and he says, that necklace that you're wearing, it's something that I've used to keep watch over you. Or, or he gave it to the, his mom and right. his mom gave it to right. him. Yeah. So it's just so interesting because it. I thought, I was like, oh, he got his necklace from Camp Half-Blood already, but it's not. It was even before he got there. So it's just this tiny little detail that I've noticed every episode. And well, I, I just hope that they're going to explain it because it's just so apparent. Or it's just part of his costume. They're like, we're not going to explain it. You're going to have to wait until season five. I feel like they make decisions like that for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just officially wanted to mention it because I don't know if anybody else has noticed it at all because it's not a Camp Half-Blood Netflix. It's something else. Oh, interesting. I have not noticed. Mm-hmm. I have noticed, but I hadn't like noticed you know what i mean interesting and he's worn it the whole time the whole time hmm okay yeah keep an eye out yeah just just keep an eye out or just waiting for the story i feel like it i feel like it means something i could be wrong i'm they make choices for a reason i just said that yeah (laughs) (laughs) so green episode i i i feel like a lot happened but it was very like Getting from point A to point B. It mm-hmm. wasn't a filler episode. Obviously, stuff happened. Um, but I'm very, very excited for the next episode. Yes, it's your favorite. We it's get, coming up. We get Krusty's. We get the Underworld, which looked insane. Yeah, I can't wait to really it looked be there. Better than what I thought 
in my imagination reading the books. It looks so cool. That thing that when like Annabeth, it shows Annabeth and it like kind of pans up and there's that thing wrapped in the cloth. I was like, Ah! what is that? We get our (laughs) three-headed dog friend. Cerberus. Cerberus. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Also for Krusty's. Yes. (laughs) For Krusty's. Yay. Waterbed Emporium. We know what's happening in the next episode. (laughs) I can't wait to see what he looks like. Krusty. Did it show it? I think I've seen it. I think I've seen it online or maybe it was wrong. Oh, I don't know. But I mean, if he doesn't look like a raptor in like a, like a robe or something like that, what's the point? (laughs) Cancel the scene. Yeah. (laughs) So very excited. We have a penultimate. We don't know what we're doing after this. It's going to be kind of sad when we're done with Percy Jackson. No, we've been living in this world for what, two, three months? And you have two. Listener. We're all in this together. (laughs) Watching Percy and Annabeth and Grover do great things. So if you <laughs> have any idea, sometimes I don't know how long it's going to go. It can keep going. That's so true. if you have an idea of what you want us to do next or something that has happened while we were doing this, let us know. Yeah. Put down below. Comment below. Uh, okay. So till next week where we go to the underworld, but not before we shop for waterbeds. We're going to be in LA, baby. Oof, I love it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.